Good morning, church. Welcome to our Sunday worship. Whether you are in person or joining us online, you are very welcome here, and we would love you to call All Saints home. It is no mistake that you're here this morning, and if you are new, please do come and say hello to us, and we would like to tell you more about our wonderful church family. Our little frog kids are just leaving us now. Gosh, there's a lot of them this morning. Great. Well, before I begin this morning's message, let's commit ourselves to this time together to offer up soft hearts and open minds to God and commit ourselves to the authority of Scripture to speak truth to us this morning right here and right into our situation. So we say together the words will be up on the screen. Yes, they are. I believe this is God's word. It is alive and active. It is food for my soul and healing for my body. I am ready to receive the word from God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful. Well, here we are in the fourth Sunday of Advent. Nearly all the candles are lit. Christmas Day is coming up fast. Have you finished your shopping? Yes? A little bit. It's a little bit more to do. We had, we had one day to do ours. We hit it just like machines. We were, we were super fast, super done. And if you are here this morning in present, well done, because you should get a good gold star for not going to hit in the shops this morning. Now, I believe that God has a message for you and I right here from the book of Luke. Now, our gospel reading today was from Luke 1, 39 to 55. It was quite a long reading, so if you've got your Bible with you, um, look it up or on your phone or reread it when you get home, because there is so much in that scripture. And this particular section of scripture contains the beautiful words that are sometimes referred to as the Magnificat. The word Magnificat is Latin and means to magnify. But what do we mean by that here? Well, this morning, it, the, well, at all times, the word means to praise highly and to glorify. And the subject of our praise, as always, is God. And these words are delivered by the young pregnant Mary. Now, as I was meditating on the words this week, I was reminded of the time when I was asked to be Mary in the church nativity service. Now, as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed child, I was usually typecast as an angel, surprise, surprise. But finally, my time came and I was picked for the starring role. Who would have ever thought it? Well, in church life, that was definitely the plum roll. That was the, that was the top job. But as I wore that little traditional blue dress and headdress that I think some mum had made out of, you know, an old pillowcase or something, I did not ever give a second thought particularly to the person of Mary. She didn't really cross my mind. Because quite often, she is just the quiet figure of the young girl bending lovingly over the straw-filled feeding trough. She is silent and meek and mild and a passive figure of the nativity scene. She's a body, a vehicle with which God will purpose out his salvation for humanity. We may not think of her as having her own voice, but in the Magnificat, we have the longest speech spoken by a woman in the New Testament. Yes, Mary has been chosen for the most important task, but this young innocent girl has a voice that speaks wisdom way beyond her years, a voice that still speaks truth into our generation today. Now, our text today comes out from Mary's visit to her relative Elizabeth, and Elizabeth herself is already in the midst of this miracle pregnancy with the child who will be John the Baptist. And it is when Mary enters Elizabeth's house that on hearing Mary's greeting, the unborn baby leaps in Elizabeth's womb, with Elizabeth declaring the prophetic words that here is the mother of the Lord and that blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. 
Now this intimate gathering of two pregnant women sees the hope for humanity gathered with both unborn children holding so much potential in their tiny little unfinished bodies. John the Baptist and Jesus Christ together, their destinies already planned by God. And Mary, such a young girl, so vulnerable, speaks the words of one who is much older, one so wise, and her words are bathed in the words of scripture. So what can we take from these ancient words? What do they speak to us today? Well, the first thing that we can take from these words is that Mary was radical. The passive nativity figure that we so often see underestimates the radical nature of Mary herself. The first verses given to us by Luke already show her incredible character. My soul magnifies the Lord, she says, and my spirit rejoices in, my, in God my Saviour. Now, how many of us would rejoice if God asked of us what he had asked of Mary? And that applies to you men and women, because this is not just a story about an unexpected pregnancy. The story of Mary isn't just a female narrative only for the hearing of female ears, because this is God calling all of us out, all of us out from everything that we expected and anticipated for our own lives. In the sacrificial offering of herself to God, we can see how God operates in unexpected places with unexpected people to give extraordinary consequences. And are we open and willing to do that too? Can we still sing a praise to our mighty God when our life is turned upside down? Mary was radical and she continues, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Mary was under no illusion that she was anything other than lowly. She knew her situation and her circumstances, but she also knew the one who had chosen her. But how did she come to trust and know God so intimately? Because she intimately knew her scriptures. The words that Mary speaks here are an echo of the prayer that Hannah offers in 1 Samuel 2 verses 1 to 10. Hannah is also a mother, this time to Samuel. Hannah was another strong woman who also has a child in extraordinary circumstances. And because Mary was a woman of faith, she could see how God had worked before and she knew that he was still working in her situation. She knew her God. She knew that God had worked in the past just as he is working in the future. Can we say the same too? And Mary highlights for us today the need for us to get into the word of God. Because when we can see how he worked before, we can have the hope that he is still working today. And the radical way that Mary believes highlights the radical way in turn that Jesus lives. God gives to the most unlikely person the most precious gift of all humanity. The greatest saviour comes into the world in the poorest of circumstances and Mary sees it and she knows it and she believes it. Why? Because Mary was receptive. She declares in verse 49, for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. Mary encapsulates all that it is to trust God. I don't think we ever give enough thought to what was happening here to her. Matthew 1 verse 19 states, that Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. Mary was about to go an absolute public humiliation. She was going to be humiliated in front of her whole community. Yet, she is willing to receive the task that her God has set before her. She is receptive and open to life-changing events. And not only is she receptive, but she does so still praising, still believing, and still with the words of worship on her lips. 
She is under no illusion of who she is, but she also knows whose daughter she is. And not only does she know that in her heart, but she also knows that from now on, all generations will call her blessed. She speaks it out because our words own such power. James 3 verse 9 cautions us that with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and yet with it we curse human beings. Our words show what is in our hearts, and Mary's words show that her heart is open and receptive to God. But Mary's receptiveness to God is not to serve herself. She is not joyous because of what bearing the Son of God is going to offer her. Mary is receptive to God because she knows the saving power that it's not only going to have to Israel, but to the whole world. Yet again in Mary, we see the radical nature and paradox that we find in the whole Bible encapsulated in Jesus Christ himself. That is not to do things that serve others, but to offer our own selves sacrificially. John 15 verses 12 and 13 says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's own friends. Mary, in offering her own body to bear the Son of God, is already foreshadowing the laying down of her own son's life for all humanity. And how right it is that we should still today call her blessed. And remember Mary, who was a strong, courageous woman of faith, a trailblazer and a role model, not a weak, passive side part in God's story of salvation. Because not only was Mary radical and receptive, but she was also revolutionary. Because in her declaration at the house of Elizabeth, Mary speaks of her God in terms counter to those of her society and to those of the world today. Because Mary speaks dangerous words, words that upset those who rule and who hold power. In her words, we hear the revolutionary words of a God whose heart is for those who are oppressed and who struggle, those who are hungry and hurting, and he still does today. The beginning of Mary's song opens with the beautiful personal, but in the second half, it moves into the corporate. This is for all of humanity. God's mercy is for those who fear him, not afraid of him, but who stand in awe of his might. A God who scatters the proud, brings down the powerful from their thrones. Those who have power in this world do not have power over God. Mary's song is one of hope, not only in this world, but into the next. Mary speaks not only into her own context, but into ours, and then still yet into the promise of eternity as we will share through the salvation that Jesus brings. Mary knows that the world lifts up the powerful, those who sit on thrones. And her words were so radical that at certain points in history, her words, Mary's song, the Magnificat, have been banned. Her words are so revolutionary as at some times in history to be considered dangerous. Well, they are revolutionary because they challenge us all. They challenge us to step in when we see the hungry needing food, to step in when we see injustices being carried out. Mary's words challenge us to also live a radical revolutionary faith, receptive to the call that God puts on our own lives. That when God puts our lives in uncomfortable situations and circumstances, we too are to rest in the promises that he has already given to us in his word. Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, stands for us as a figure for what we can do to join in with God's work. Let's, let's never again look at her as a meek, lowly figure, passive and submissive. But let's look again at the nativity as a symbol of revolution, of upsetting the status quo and being countercultural and changing it. 
And in her obedience, let's offer up ourselves to God to say, just as she did, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. This Christmas, let's transform our faith into a radical, receptive and revolutionary outpouring of God's work in us. Because we too are bearers of Christ, we join with him in the saving action of telling others of his gospel message. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be equipped to do all that God requires of us. Let me pray for you now. Father God, we thank you for your word to us today. We praise you because you are a God who stands with those who are suffering, those who are hurting, those who are hungry. Lord Jesus, we thank you that in the words of your mother Mary, we hear of the radical and revolutionary actions of God. We ask today that you use us to step into the places where the world is hurting, to be brave, to step out in faith, and for your Holy Spirit to equip and empower us to do your work here on earth. And we look forward with sure and certain hope of an eternity spent with you. Praise you, Lord Jesus, for by the gift of your blood, we are washed clean. Use us as your servants to share that gift with others. Amen. Mm -hmm.